On Sunday, August 31st, 2008, Supreme Master Ching Hai accepted an invitation as guest from East Coast FM Radio to share with listeners her thoughts on vegetarianism versus the meat diet. East Coast FM Radio is one of the most popular radio stations in Ireland, broadcasting from Bray, County Wicklow, since 1989. East Coast FM's radio former co-host, Louise Kings, became vegetarian over two years ago when her dog was diagnosed with cancer. After researching on the internet, Miss Kings changed her dog's diet to a vegetarian. As a result, the cancer stopped spreading completely and her dog lived two more years. Miss King's decision to be vegetarian was further motivated by her reading of Supreme Master Ching Hai's Alternative Living Flyer at an exhibition booth in Dublin. The program's co-host at the time, Mike the Sandman, became a vegan after the interview with Supreme Master Ching Hai and from watching Supreme Master television. The interview, which was broadcast nationwide in Ireland and worldwide on live internet radio, drew appreciative responses from listeners who sent emails and text messages during and afterward. We now invite you to enjoy Interview with Supreme Master Ching Hai by East Coast FM Radio on Sunday, August 31st, 2008. Hello and you're all very welcome to Sunday Night with Louise Kings and the Sandman, East Coast FM spiritual, holistic and enlightening show. I'm your host, Louise Kings. And I'm the Sandman. And what a show we have for you on this fine Sunday is tonight. We are honoured to be talking live to Grand Supreme Master Chiang Hai. Supreme Master Ching Hai is a world-renowned humanitarian, environmentalist, best-selling author, artist, designer, musician and spiritual visionary whose love and assistance extends beyond all cultural and racial boundaries to millions of people around the world. And she has graciously agreed to do this interview from her extremely busy schedule to talk about the condition of our planet and what we really can do to help it. If you'd like to find out more, you can go to Sky Channel 835, uh, where Supreme Master TV is. Or you can, if you're on listening to us on the Internet, it's www.suprememastertv.com. And there's full details of all the different programs um, and the, the lives and passions um, of Grand Supreme Master uh, Chiang Hai, who we're going to be talking to in just a couple of minutes. Yeah, I, I only I only discovered um, it <laughs> through you, by the way. I only discovered the channel, and it's quite amazing. Uh, it has subtitles um, in how many different languages? Thirty different <laughs> languages. So it's probably the most global TV station ever. You well, might I mean, even see it in the Guinness World Book of Records. It's also very very interesting. We're here a long time now, and we talked to a lot of people. But uh, I'm a hard guy to convince, but. I have, it took me a very short time to be convinced about um, what the message is. It is quite amazing. Uh, the figures there are obviously done scientifically. And uh, what really struck me is that we're feeding cattle from food that's beside us. And we could take that food and feed the people that's beside the food. So I think we have someone special online there, Louise. Hello, Hello Grand Supreme Master. Master. Hi. Hello, Hello good, good evening. evening. Good evening. How are you? I'm fine. How are you, madam? I'm doing very well. Well, we're very honored to be speaking to you. I believe you've got an incredibly busy schedule at the moment. It's all right. It just look busy. <laughs> I believe this is your first Irish radio interview. First with you, yes? It is. Thanks for the honor and privilege. <laughs> oh, the honor and privilege is ours. Thank, Thank you, you so much. much. We're going to go, go straight to some questions, Grand Supreme Master, if that's OK, because I'm aware of how busy you are. It's all right. Yes, please. <laughs> well, Supreme Master, the, the, about the issue of global warming, because I believe this is certainly an area that's quite close to your heart. Um, I think what we're asking is what that means for the fate of ourselves and indeed our planet. Um, is one that more and more people are becoming aware of. And many of us are about, you know, the burning of fossil fuels and how that increases greenhouse gases. Now, although we do our best to recycle and change our light bulbs and drive hybrid cars and eat organically local grown food and so on, but according to the UN report, Livestock's a long shadow from November 2006, so it's actually not the number one cause of greenhouse gases, but in fact, the report that found that 18% of all greenhouse gas emissions are caused by the livestock industry, which is more than all forms of transportation put together. For example, scientists have shown that 
say the average car produces three cal uh, kilograms a day of CO2 gases, while clearing rainforest to produce a beef or maybe one hamburger produces 75 kilograms of CO2 gases. That's a huge difference of two and a half thousand percent. So for anyone wanting to reduce their carbon footprint, this is clearly shows that eating meat has a much bigger impact on the environment than, say, driving your car. Would you be in agreement with what the scientists are saying? Yes, ma'am. Uh, 18% pollution is just part of the estimate. Actually, there are other hidden size causes of global warming because it's not included like people get sick and the price we have to pay for the hospital and the taking care and to develop medicine and research and etc. etc. And cause of the sorrow of people who lost a loved one due to meat related illness. Yeah. And uh, all the change that we advocate up to now by society is uh, helping, but there's very little, as you can uh, calculate it yourself. Only vegetarian diet can truly help. And as every action provokes another action, and likes attract like. So if we save lives, ours will be spared. Everything else is just, uh, you know, secondary. My opinion. Mm -hmm. Thank you. In, in the, the research, research community, community, this information um, is nothing new. In fact, the Union of Concerned Scientists, more than 1,700 of the world's leading scientists, including the majority of Nobel laureates in the science, warned all humanity and governments about global warming as far back as 1992. This was their warning, that no more than one or a few decades remain before the chance to avert the threats that we now confront will be lost and the prospects for humanity immeasurably um, diminished. Right. More recently, in his testimony before the US Congress on the 23rd of June in 2008, James Hansen, the director of NASA's Goddard Institute for Space Studies, as well as being NASA's top climate expert, stated that we've let it go so far that urgent action is now needed to reduce greenhouse gas emissions in order to prevent the point of no return where disastrous climate changes would spiral out of humanity's control. So it seems that the facts have been out there for quite a while, but somehow we've not paid enough attention to it to let it reach this uh, critical stage. What changes are the scientists talking about that we need to make? in the situation really that critical? And if so, do we have enough time to make these changes? Uh, according to the scientists, whatever they have predicted or prescribed about our critical situation is accurate up to 99%. Certainty, exceeding even 99%. So they want us to change the way we live our life, to protect our fragile ecosystem by cutting down CO2 emission. And the fastest way that individuals can do uh, without a lot of uh, protocol and ado is to be veg. Choose a vegan diet, as in evidence is uh, pointed out, that to produce uh, just uh, meat alone would cost 18% of greenhouse gas pollution. It's truly critical now, as we have witnessed increasing our disaster worldwide due to climate change. And yet, madam, we still have time. We still have a little time uh, to change the course of destiny thanks to the vegetarian population, old and new members, uh, that reduce the most uh, karmic retribution in the short span of time. Thus, we have like an extended deadline before the, the no return point. But it's not much, you know. We must change fast to avoid much more damage to the earth, as well as loss of more lives and resources. Thank you. Thank you. It's uh, about public awareness, really. Yeah. Um, policymakers and leading environmental organisations, as well as the transportation industry, are doing a good job of informing the public about greener transportation options and greener energy um, and are working towards solutions with wind, wave and, and solar power, um, etc. But up to now, there have been slow when it comes to livestock issue, which means that also the public isn't being informed and that the urgent changes we need to make are not being made quickly enough. What can we do to raise public awareness so that it's not just the research scientists that know about it, but every man, woman and child know about it? That's a very good, good question, madam. I think the media like yours play important roles in raising public awareness about uh, this urgent planetary situation. And some other media agency uh, have also begun to make uh, related info available to the public. Uh, at large. 
it's just uh, not uh, often enough, you know, for my <laughs> liking, <laughs> sorry to say. I just hope that there are more announcements concerning climate changes and the solution be made uh, to the whole public. The best solution for our urgent situation right now is a vegetarian diet, and it should be openly endorsed and even made into law, if possible, to protect people, animals, and our planet. The only one that we have. And uh, right now we have uh, Supreme Master Television with 14 satellite platforms broadcasting worldwide. We have seminars, we have flyers distribution, vegetarian restaurant, more and more every day we open, and class for vegetarian diet and websites, etc., etc. We try our best in our individual group to inform the public also in many ways. But uh, if everyone who knows the planet urgency and the benefit the miracle benefit of a vegetarian solution to save the earth, uh, if all of them would extend their help by uh, being a, an example and spread out the news, then uh, it will be quicker and more hopeful. And above all, if the governments make it uh, a policy to inform the public and to endorse the vegetarian diet openly, you know, it's become like a trend and to change the bad uh, habit of meat eating and uh, encourage the new good tradition of vegetarian diet. It will work if the government endorses it. For example, in many countries, as you know it, all the citizens, 99.9% .9 citizens, follow one religion alone or another because that or this religion is recognized as national faith. Thank you. Um, another question that we have for you. Um, recently, Supreme Master Television interviewed Dr. Rajenda Pachui, head of the United Nations Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change in Wellington in New Zealand at the World Environment Day conference. He once again restated his position that people should cut back on their meat consumption so that we can drastically reduce the effects of global warming. In your opinion, would that uh, alone be enough to have an effect on global warming and how much would we have to come back on to have the effect for our environment? We have to cut back two-thirds of our meat consumption and dairy product at least. You know, and everything else concerning animal product like leather and all kind of things. Or two-thirds of the population must cut back on animals' product. You know, be vegan then we have at least the minimum positive good energy to counterbalance the negative dark impact right now on our planet. Everything else will then uh, move along in a more beneficial direction. Thank you. Thank you, Supreme Master. Supreme Master, this month um, in August in Ireland, there was a salmonella scare uh, and there was a nationwide recall of meat products from one of the country's biggest sandwich chains. In fact, these recalls seem to be becoming more and more frequent. We read about them almost every day. Somewhere in the world, meat is being recalled due to E. coli or salmonella poisoning or some other disease. It seems that if we eat meat, it's not only affecting the environment, but we're actually taking risks with our own health. Why do you feel that we're seeing more and more of these recalls? Well, madam, uh, clearly it is a warning sign, huh? As heaven's last resource to sound an alarming bells, we must listen. And now, the animals, they are also trying to help waking up human race by sacrificing their lives. Anyone who can communicate with the animals by telepathy would uh, confirm my view on this. Now, please, if anyone is listening, we must stop all act of harming and killing, hurting humans or other species. Stop damaging the environment and live simple life, as simple as possible, according to our resources. More in tune with nature. Live and let all live so that our lives may be spared and blessed with happiness. Thank you. Thank you. Supreme Master, actually, we have had actually um, a number of animal communicators on our show and they have said the very same thing. Yes, wonderful. Thank you so much. Please thank them for me. I will, I will of course. 
Supreme Master, apart from the increasing incidence of recalled meat, there's also more and more reports coming out about other diseases that animals have that have been found in the meat and how these animals' diseases can affect our own health. For example, just this year, the American Society for Microbiology reported that people with Crohn's disease are sevenfold more likely to have in their gut tissues the bacterium that causes a digestive tract disease in cattle called John's. This disease is a severe and fatal bacterial infection that strikes cattle, sheep, sheep and other livestock. With this new information coming to light and with all the other risks associated with the consumption of meat, from just the point of view of our own health on the individual level, it seems as if we're taking our life into our hands each time that we eat meat. How bad is meat for our health? Oh, madam, very, very bad. Every time we eat meat, we're shortening our lives and inflicting suffering to ourselves. I could read just a few uh, examples, if you allow me, if our time is allowed. Yeah, we've got time. We have countless disease relating to meat. This is some example. High blood pressure, heart disease, diabetes, stroke, Parkinson's disease, bladder cancer, colon cancer, prostate and ovarian cancer, lung, skin and kidney cancer, breast cancer, blue tongue disease, E. coli, salmonella, bird flu, mad cow, pig disease, shellfish poisoning, listerosis, preeclampsia, come pillow butter etc etc and over 17 million lives lost globally each year for heart disease in the united states alone it costs one trillion u.s dollar per year for cardiovascular disease and over one million new people affected by colon cancer each year more than 600,000 colon cancer related death annually in the united states alone colon cancer treatment costs 6.5 billion one million people are newly diagnosed with the meat-related cancers every year. 246 million people affected with diabetes. An estimate 174 billion spend each year on treatment. And, you know, obesity, 1.6 billion overweight people. And 400 million more obese people and cost 93 billion each year for medical expenses. In the United States alone, at least 2.6 million people die annually from problems related to overweight, etc., etc. And we use up 70% of clean water, pollute most of the water bodies, deforest the lungs of the earth, use up 90% of world cereals, cause world hunger and wars, 80% cost of global warming. A lot more, and even a meal, cause of breast cancer, prostate cancer, testicular cancer from hormones present in milk. And listeria, Crohn disease, hormones and saturated fat lead to osteoporosis, obesity, diabetes and heart disease and a higher incidence of multiple sclerosis, classified as major allergen, lactose intolerance, etc., etc., madam. I could go on forever, but uh, I know you don't have time. Thank you. Thank you. The list really is en- endless. Some of the diseases related to meat consumption and or production. Rabies, anthrax, sleeping sickness, Q fever, norovirus, swine flu, Ebola restin virus. Cured meats and fish increase leukemia risk in children. Antibiotic resistant superbug infections from a strain of Staphylococcus aureus. Blue tongue disease, E. coli, Salmonella, bird flu, mad cow disease, or Creutzfeldt Jakob disease, 90% of the population at risk. Pig's disease, or PMWS, listeriosis, shellfish poisoning, preeclampsia, Campylobacter, Clostridium difficile, diseases hidden in healthy appearing livestock. Some of the costs of meat eating. Infertility. Eating just one serving of meat per day increases the risk of women's infertility by 32% with additional meat consumption increasing the risk. Heart disease. Over 17 million lives lost globally each year. Cost of cardiovascular disease is at least 1 trillion US dollars a year. Cancer. Increased childhood cancers and adult reproductive cancers from hormones in meat. Colon rectal cancer. Over 1 million new colon cancer patients diagnosed each year. More than 600,000 colon cancer related mortalities annually. In the United States alone, colon cancer treatment costs about 6.5 billion US dollars. 
millions of people are newly diagnosed with other meat-related cancers every year. Diabetes. 246 million people are affected worldwide. An estimated 174 billion US dollars spent each year on treatment in just the United States. Obesity. Worldwide, 1.6 billion adults are overweight, with 400 million more who are obese. Costs 93 billion US dollars each year for medical expenses in the United States alone. At least 2.6 million people die annually from problems related to being overweight or obese. Environmental. Use up to 70% of clean water. Pollute most of the water bodies. Deforest the lungs of the earth uses up to 43% of the world's cereal, uses up to 85% of the world's soy, cause world hunger and wars, 80% cause of global warming, plus more. Some of the costs of milk consumption, cowpox from milking cows, bacterial microbes, pesticides, and enzymes found in cheese derived from the inner stomach linings of other animals, up to 80% of the calories in cheese are from pure fat. Breast, prostate, and testicular cancer from hormones present in milk. Listeria and Crohn's disease. Hormones and saturated fat leads to osteoporosis, obesity, diabetes, and heart disease. Linked to higher incidences of multiple sclerosis. Classified as a major allergen. Lactose intolerance, plus more. For help quitting, please visit For more urgent information, please visit www.suprememastertv.com forward slash killers. Supreme Master, many people think that we need to eat meat and dairy to have a healthy diet and that the vegetarian and vegan diets is less nutritious. Even some of the greatest athletes of our time, such as Muhammad Ali, Carl Lewis, Martina Navratilova, are vegetarian. Some doctors have been known to encourage their patients to eat meat. We used to be told that we need animal protein to survive, but as we've seen, there's so many reports now that say just the opposite, that meat can cause cancers and many other diseases which you've just listed. But why is there still this misconception that we need meat and animal products in our diet? Why? Because uh, there's not enough uh, information and reverse action taken to correct uh, this misconception. And people are not aware of the true harms and costs of meat, although there are plenty available in the Internet uh, and some scientific and research reports. Most people do not uh, even know about it to even check it out and they uh, have uh, very little time to. It has to be more like prominently endorsed through government, through law, to media. It has to become a matter-of-fact way uh, of life to abstain uh, from harmful meat diet and uh, live in the beneficial way of a noble, healthy vegetarian diet. And I could uh, tell you a little bit about vegetarian diet, how beneficial it is. It lower blood pressure, it lower cholesterol levels, it reduced type 2 diabetes, it prevents stroke conditions, reverse atherosclerosis, reduce heart disease risk 50%, reduce heart surgery risk 80%, prevent many forms of cancer, stronger immune system, increase life expectancy up to 15 years, higher IQ. We conserve 70% clean water, save up to 70% of the Amazon forest from clearance for animal grazing, and it would free up to 3.5 million hectares of land annually. It free up to 760 million tons of grain every year. Half of the world's grain supply, can you imagine that? Consume two-thirds less fossil fuel than those used for meat production. Reduce pollution from untreated animal waste. Maintain clean air, save 4.5 tons of emission per U.S. household per year. And it will stop 80% global warming. My calculation. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Supreme Master, in relation to world hunger, the United Nations has said that a child still dies of hunger every five seconds. Yet 55% of the world's grains and 80% of the world's soya are fed to livestock. There are 860 million people going hungry in the world and yet the grains fed to livestock is enough to feed 2 billion people. At the same time, each and every second an area the size of a football field or a tropical rainforest 
is destroyed to produce just 257 hamburgers. How has it come to this and what can we do about it? Madam, it's been a long time now. So I think in the name of the free world, we exercise our power over many powerless corners of the planet for whatever reason, sometimes beyond my imagination, or for profit and control. Even heaven would shed tears of pity, but how many of us would? The obvious thing to do to correct this is to turn to the vegetarian diet, which consumes far less uh, resources, and we would have more than enough to sustain the whole world population and more surplus than the, the rest of what we dream of will follow. When uh, the Earth's atmosphere is saturated with love and peace and kindness, we will have all calmness of mind to think of higher purpose, to invent a better technology, to be a more enlightened being, worthy of the title Children of God. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you. Many great thinkers and humanitarians past and present have spoken about the benefits of meat-free diet, such as Einstein, Leonardo da Vinci and Edison were vegetarian and spoke out in favour of the vegetarian diet. Albert Einstein actually was a vegetarian. He said, nothing will benefit human health and increase chances of survival for life on Earth as much as the evolution to a vegetarian diet. Why are so many great thinkers and humanitarians vegetarians? And what does this actually tell us about the vegetarian diet in regards to mental health? Well, <laughs> your question answers itself. <laughs> and actually, in England, the British Medical Journal reports that the more smarter you are, the more likely you'll be vegetarian. Uh, Trish uh, Kennett, the chief executive of the International High IQ Society, Mensa, uh, explain that the smart people consider all aspects of their life very, very carefully. People who think about the ethics of killing animals will naturally choose vegetarianism more often. In a research that follows 8,000 people from birth, scientists discover that those with an IQ five points above the average had become vegetarian, uh, the latest by the time they were about 30 years old. So. You see, all the thinkers, they are smart too, so of course they are vegetarian. I invite everyone to join the club and prove that you are smart. <laughs> That's a good way of looking at it. Supreme Master, in the UK, Prince Charles he recently expressed his concerns about the urgency to fight global warming in the article entitled 18 Months to Stop Climate Change Disaster, published in May 2008 in the Telegraph newspaper in the UK. Would you endorse his concern? Oh yes, of course, indeed. Uh, His Royal Highness is a very, very responsible and concerned leader. I really, really support and admire him. Uh, If we have more people like him, we can save the world. When His Royal Highness spoke about 18 months, that was long ago. And uh, every day is a long day if we do not stop the global warming. At that time, he was correct. At that time, I also say the same. In similar time frame, I also say the similar things. Like I say, we had only two years, a little bit long before him, a few months before His uh, Royal Highness spoke. And now, because we have uh, propagated the vegetarian diets every corner of the world we can, and with the Supreme Master Television and all that, and with new restaurants open everywhere, we have gained more uh, vegetarian members, and thus, we have gained some uh, beneficial, good uh, karmic uh, merit. So we have gained more time to change history. Thank you. Thank you. And um, recently, uh, Grand Supreme you were a guest speaker at an international global warming seminar in Los Angeles, attended by many press and government officials. Um, our listeners can find out more by going to the website ecofoodprint.org. But do you feel that a uh, conference had a positive influence on the participants and the people who attended the conference or watched it on Supreme Master Television? Yes, yes, madam, yes. <laughs> Even as we are speaking right now, I'm sure some people would have turned to become vegetarian. Okay, there were evidences of that. You see, the audiences at that time uh, who were attending, they uh, pledged a vegetarian lifestyle. And uh, many who wrote to the Supreme Master Television Uh, that they became vegetarian because of the info from our television. And one rancher viewer 
even turn vegetarian and stop stock raising. And she doesn't want to even sell her cattle for fear that they will be killed for meat. So she's keeping them right now, but not selling them anymore and not killing them anymore. Isn't that nice? That is lovely. Lovely, thank you. It's a true story. <laughs> in a recent video seminar in Thailand, you mentioned that the mass killing of 56 billion land animals each year creates negative energy, resulting in dark forces which surround the earth, which in turn cause more frequent and stronger disasters, which we, we were all witness to. As this concept of energy is rather abstract for many people, is there any way we can demonstrate the materialization of positive or negative energy? Well, these are things uh, abstract, of course, but we can somehow demonstrate. In uh, Japan, they have made uh, an experiment with water. Uh, Dr. Masaru Emoto. We've studied his work on this show many, many times, Grand Supreme Master. We're a big fan of his. With the frozen crystal form of water, and if uh, you recite the name of a holy person or tape that name of the holy person on the glass of that water, and then uh, when that water crystallizes, it's beautiful form and pure and nice. And if you recite some bad people name or some evil uh, names or some evil thought project into that water, or tape some bad people name on it, then the crystallized water of that glass will become very murky and it look very uh, ugly and very uh, strange. So the more positive and purer the energy, the more beautiful frozen water crystal is. Uh, and then if it's surrounded by hatred or pollutants, then the frozen structure is ugly or sometimes cannot be formed even. And uh, in our daily life, we can prove it like if you are in love with uh, each other, even far apart, you feel elated from the love energy. And when you quarrel or hating each other, though even you're not speaking into words or expressing it, uh, there is a heavy air and oppressive cold war, no? And uh, uh, moreover, the magician, uh, black or white, they harness their mind energy to heal or to harm, even from distance, to uh, target the person that they like to heal or to harm. The priests, they use a prayer's energy to bless or to exercise uh, the possess the person or animals even. We all know this. It's just some example. Thank you. Actually, Supreme Master, I see many Irish people walking around with bottles where they've written positive, positive words on them. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, another question. Um, the biggest challenge facing people, particularly mothers who wish to help their families move on to a, maybe a healthier animal free diet is knowing where to start. With so many other things in life to take care of, what advice would you offer mothers to make it easier to change these lifelong habits? Oh, that's right, madam. Yes, I am very sympathetic with the busy people and uh, not just mother, but people are very busy. But we have to make priority, madam. Otherwise, it's life and death matter. Uh, we have to make priority. Uh, first, uh, we must know what to cook and where to buy. Uh, get in internet knowledge, nowadays it's easy, or uh, get to, uh, in contact with the vegetarian group and stay with supportive vegetarian people. They will help you, they will teach you how to cook and where to buy things, and uh, they will get you all the possible facts of vegetarian and how good the vegetarian diet is and how harmful the meat diet so that you can convince yourself, your family, and your friends, so they do not redo your decision and make you regress. And pray for heaven's grace to stay strong in your uh, commitment to compassion and kindness. That is a beginning, and later on it will be very easy. Some of the benefits of a vegetarian diet lowers blood pressure, lowers cholesterol levels, reduces type 2 diabetes, prevents stroke conditions, reverses atherosclerosis, reduces heart disease risk 50%, reduces heart surgery risk 80%, prevents many forms of cancer, stronger immune system, increases life expectancy up to 15 years, higher IQ, saves 70% of a total cost of 40 trillion US dollars for reducing global warming, uses 4.5 times less land to grow food, conserves up to 70% clean water, saves 80% of the cleared Amazonian rainforest from animal grazing. A solution for world hunger. Free up 3.4 billion hectares of land, 
free up 760 million tons of grain every year, or half the world's grain supply, consumes one-third fossil fuels of those used for meat production, reduces pollution from untreated animal waste, maintains cleaner air, saves 4.5 tons of emissions per U.S. household per year, stop 80% of global warming, plus more. Save your life. Be veg. Go green. Speaking of children, Grand Supreme Master, I've heard it said that most of our children would choose to be vegetarians if we hadn't encouraged them to eat meat. That's right. Is it healthy for our children to be vegetarian? And will there be enough protein and nutrients? And what age is healthy for our children to become vegan or vegetarian? There's no age for this, madam. From the mother's womb already would be the best. In our group, uh, children of our association members are all vegetarian and even from birth already. And they're healthy, pinky, and active, and intelligent. And they're very, very obedient, very cooperative with the parents. And they're calm and kind from childhood on. Uh, they will be at the top of physical and mental fitness. People can check uh, on our website for more proof. Uh, we watch our past program on uh, vegetarian family, introduction of uh, families who are vegetarian and the children who are vegetarian uh, a lot on our program. And even in any vegetarian society, they would have it. I check with other vegetarian family, children, etc., etc. Uh, even my dogs are vegan and they are so strong and healthy. <laughs> Um, one last question, question um, uh, Master Cheng Hai. Yes, if I'm a listener to this show right now, and I will say, okay, right now, from now on, I'm not going to eat any more meat, where should I start? And I know you mentioned a couple of places. In Ireland, huh? you have an uh, Ireland vegetarian society. We do. Yes. And uh, many online websites nowadays, yeah? health shops and uh, veggie burgers, sausage, even Linda McCartney. Sausages in Tesco, you have. Yeah? That's right. Uh, Russia's and so on. And we have cooking shows uh, almost daily on Supreme Master Television. And we have all the free to download, free of charge, free of obligation. Fantastic, delicious, international, from all corners of the world, from the jungle of Africa to the Great War in China. We have all the you know, exotic and beautiful international vegetarian uh, menu for you to download anytime. You can make two, three books out of them and cook uh, them every day. Uh, it's on SupremeMasterTV.com and it's free of charge for you every time, anytime you want to download anything from it, not just the vegetarian diet and vegetarian uh, menu. Uh, everything is free from that television and we don't even have commercial, so you can watch them always free. <laughs> Uh, just to finish off, uh, we've some good news, Supreme Master Ching Hai. All new homes built in Ireland from uh, 2013, um, well, according to the Environmental Minister, John Gormley, will have to be carbon neutral and emit no harmful greenhouse gases using solar panels, wind turbines and triple glaze windows. I thought that would might make you smile. Wow. Big time smile, yes. <laughs> so good of Ireland and her people. God bless you so much. God bless your country. Even uh, Ireland was the first country in the Northern Hemisphere, mm -hmm. even first one in Europe, to ban smoking. Yes. They just support the government even. Nobody complained. Wonderful. And they even were happy. And many people say that since the ban came into effect, they even stopped smoking. It helps them too. Bravo, bravo. Oh, I love Ireland. <laughs> Supreme Master, just another quick one. It's um, no secret about your love of animals, especially, you know, the animals or your pets that you have. Um, do you encourage them to eat vegetarian? Yes, they are all vegetarian, madam. Including your dogs? Including my dogs, my birds. They don't even eat anything that's not vegetarian. Even one time when I first adopted my, one of my dogs, he's poodle. Uh -huh. and, and he was sick from head to toe. And even after a few months, he still yes. lingered in sickness. And we brought him to the vet, you know, and he had to stay there for a while to check up and all that. And the vet gave him something with meat, yeah? even though we told him already. And then he doesn't eat. And so we have to give him vegetarian food, then he eats. And now uh, in the market, sometimes they uh, imitate fish or seafood. Yeah. Yeah. 
and they imitated it so well that the smell is, this is like fish, very stinking, and I could not eat it. So I thought, okay, never mind, I'm a picky, I'm not used to it, but my dog surely will eat it, no problem. I give to my dog, they just smell it and they left, they don't eat. <laughs> And Supreme Master, I had a dog, because you mentioned your poodle, I had a Samoyed who was literally was my best friend. And she became very, very ill. Um, I have to be honest and say I did feed her meat in her early years. And she got cancer twice. And I think at one time we were told she was only going to last the, maj- the maximum a month. So I totally, I, I went and did my research and I found out, you know, where the cancer was coming from. And I totally redid her diet from uh, meat uh, took it out completely and moved her over to vegetables and a lot of herbs and especially a lot of healing herbs. And she lasted almost 18 months longer than she should have done. And so I now I've got other dogs and I don't give them meat. Wow, yes. It happens also to people. Many people who were sick already and of cancer even, not all forms, but many forms of cancer, when they turn to vegetarian diet, they just cure completely without medicine. Because we are eating harmful substance and of course it harms our body, but if we change from poison to nutrition, then of course our body heals. Same with dogs, eh? Some of the diseases related to meat consumption and or production. Rabies, anthrax, sleeping sickness, Q fever, norovirus, swine flu, Ebola restin virus. Cured meats and fish increase leukemia risk in children. Antibiotic-resistant superbug infections from a strain of Staphylococcus aureus. Blue tongue disease, E. coli, salmonella, bird flu, mad cow disease, or Creutzfeldt-Jakob disease, 90% of the population at risk. Pig's disease, or PMWS. Listeriosis, shellfish poisoning. Preeclampsia, Campylobacter, Clostridium difficile, diseases hidden in healthy appearing livestock. Some of the costs of meat eating. Infertility. Eating just one serving of meat per day increases the risk of women's infertility by 32% with additional meat consumption increasing the risk. Heart disease. Over 17 million lives lost globally each year cost of cardiovascular disease is at least one trillion US dollars a year. Cancer. Increased childhood cancers and adult reproductive cancers from hormones in meat. Colon rectal cancer. Over one million new colon cancer patients diagnosed each year. More than 600,000 colon cancer related mortalities annually. In the United States alone, colon cancer treatment costs about 6.5 billion US dollars. Millions of people are newly diagnosed with other meat-related cancers every year. Diabetes. 246 million people are affected worldwide. An estimated 174 billion US dollars spent each year on treatment in just the United States. Obesity. Worldwide, 1.6 billion adults are overweight, with 400 million more who are obese costs 93 billion US dollars each year for medical expenses in the United States alone. At least 2.6 million people die annually from problems related to being overweight or obese. Environmental. Use up to 70% of clean water. Pollute most of the water bodies. Deforest the lungs of the earth. Uses up to 43% of the world's cereal. Uses up to 85% of the world's soy cause world hunger and wars, 80% cause of global warming, plus more. Some of the costs of milk consumption, cowpox from milking cows, bacterial microbes, pesticides and enzymes found in cheese derived from the inner stomach linings of other animals. Up to 80% of the calories in cheese are from pure fat. Breast, prostate and testicular cancer from hormones present in milk. Listeria and Crohn's disease. Hormones and saturated fat leads to osteoporosis, obesity, diabetes, and heart disease. Linked to higher incidences of multiple sclerosis. Classified as a major allergen. Lactose intolerance, plus more. For help quitting, please visit
For more urgent information, please visit www.suprememastertv.com forward slash killers. And you have the dogs are okay now? Oh, my other ones are fine. Uh, she did pass away, uh, but I had her a long time. She lived a lot longer than we expected. She was old. She was. Bless her. Bless her. <laughs> you have how many? Any other dog now? I have two. Two? Yeah, yeah. two puppies. Bless you so much. Supreme Master, we are totally honoured for you um, coming on earth this evening. Um, it's been an absolute pleasure. The salmon, I think, wants to say something. I just want to say thank you very, very much. And um, You have a recent convert there, You certainly Master have Chang'e. a con- convert, and I am very difficult to uh, convince, but I, I, I watched a lot of your uh, programme, and I watched some of the scientific... Uh, programs you had on uh, your TV and I think that I'm convinced I'm, I'm as I said I'm a difficult one to convince and I really really appreciate you taking the time to talk to us tonight oh I love you for that <laughs> I bless you in your work bless you <laughs> thank bless you. you in your radio work <laughs> thank, thank you, you very very, very much, much and hopefully we'll, we'll talk, talk again, again sometime soon thank you and your, all your loved one be blessed thank, thank, thank you, you so, so much. much thank you once again so long love so long love So we've had numerous texts regarding Supreme Master Ching Hai, who we just had on. I'm going to read you this one. It said, I just wanted to express my deepest gratitude for interviewing the Supreme Master Ching Hai. The subjects that were discussed are vital to the survival of our beautiful planet and all its precious cohabitants. And it makes me so happy that a station such as yours aired such an insightful program. Thank you, thank you, thank you. From Starlight. Well, the pleasure was ours, um, as I'm sure any of you that um, was listening to Grand Supreme Master, she really does have the most beautiful energy. In fact, here's another one. I heard your radio online broadcasting live interview that you have with Supreme Master. I found it educational and enchanting. I love Supreme Master Cheng Hai's conversation. You should interview her more. I agree. It was her first time, and yes, we do hope to have her. There's tons and tons and tons of emails and texts. It's just unreal. If you want to find out more about uh, Supreme Master Cheng Hai's work, you can just go on to www.suprememastertv.com. So that's the channel that's aired 24 hours a day um, that Supreme Master was talking about. Or you can go on Sky Channel 835. Thank you for joining us for today's Words of Wisdom for our interview with Supreme Master Ching Hai by East Coast FM Radio. And now... Please stay tuned for Golden Age Technology, coming up next on Supreme Master Television, right after Noteworthy News. May God bless our beautiful planet to continue to flourish in love, harmony, and happiness. For more details, please visit www.suprememastertv.com forward slash WOW.